Let's take it a notch higher. We are going to talk about some things for mature Christians. Hello, welcome to KFG. No feed and grow on the word. If you are new on this channel, kindly consider subscribing as well as turning on the bell for notification. I've left a link to a free ebook in the description. Kindly check it out. It will bless you. Be an example to believers in purity. 1 Timothy 4.12 Apostle Paul says to his son Timothy, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Before we look at purity, the first part says, Be an example to believers. Believers, not unbelievers. For most Christians, they will be glad when they become examples to unbelievers. But this message is not about being examples to unbelievers. It is about being examples to people who have received Jesus as Lord and committed to him. Not the unbelievers who are dead in their trespasses and sins. It is actually a problem if you as a Christian don't stand out among unbelievers in conduct and in many things. Because they have their spirit falling dead and cut off from God and so cannot live up to the standard of God but you are alive unto God. In computer language it is like comparing a basic calculator to a 2020 iMac or MacBook Pro. So to beat them in anything is not news at all. Your father wants your light to shine before them but he doesn't want you to see them as standard. Unfortunately some of them live better than many Christians. If there is any group who should see your life and receive inspiration from them then it is your fellow believers. This was the admonishment of Apostle Paul to the young minister of God, Timothy, his son in the faith. And it is legit to apply the same standards to all of us Christians today because we are all ministers as Timothy was a minister. In Ephesians 4, 11 to 12, the Bible says he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers verse 12 says for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of christ so you have a place in the ministry purity purity as used in our verse means cleanliness of life sinlessness or chastity in other words timothy should live a clean life a life people cannot easily point accusing fingers at a life other believers will watch and be inspired this is a call for excellent living I know you know you are saved by grace and not by works. It is the gift of God, Ephesians 2 8. I also know you know it is by faith that we are justified and have peace with God, Romans 5 verse 1. But that is not all. We are not saved unto uncleanliness but to holiness, 1 Thessalonians 4 7. And sin is not supposed to reign over us because we are no longer under law but under grace. And this grace we have received teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust and to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Titus 2.12 Being saved by grace doesn't in any way suggest or imply careless living. Listen to that. Being saved by grace doesn't in any way imply or suggest careless living. Rather, grace empowers us to live beyond what the unsaved person cannot reach in his best. So what is being an example to believers in purity? The example is from the Greek to pose. From the theist definition, it says it is the mark of a stroke or blow or print. Then strong concordance calls it a stamp or a scar. And the Greek word for purity is hagnia. Purity, sinlessness, chastity, meaning our life should have a stamp or the mark of being separated from the sinful way of living. It should clearly be distinguished from our past ways before Christ. If we were known as thieves, being in Christ now should make a difference in us. If we were the black sheep or goats of a sort, now that we have been regenerated, the new life must shine out clearly for other believers to be inspired to follow suit. We should be genuine inside out. All hidden works of darkness should be denounced once we have received the life we have in Christ. If you are currently involved in any evil and hidden works of darkness, be sincere to yourself. Denounce them today. Don't settle down with them. Two areas where you must enforce purity in your life. Your mind. 
Don't tolerate impure thoughts. Lust and desires must not be entertained in your mind. This is the area many people become hypocritical. They may appear pious, but in the mind, they are full of wickedness and untold evil. Be pure in the mind. That's where many of the things start from. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on this thing. So we are told what to think on. We can't just allow any thought into our mind. Control your mind. Number two, your words. Colossians 4, 6. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. You are not supposed to use filthy and vulgar words anymore. If you were used to them in the world, you cannot use them any longer. When people listen to you, they should live refreshed and edified, not broken and corrupted. Choose pure words from today. Hallelujah. Now, let me give you three reasons why you must live a clean and a pure life. Number one, to live like our Father in heaven. Yes. In Matthew 5, 45, the Lord said, Loving those who hate us is being as our Father in heaven. In the same life, living clean is being like our Heavenly Father. First John 1, 5 says, He is light and there is no darkness in Him. So when we are living the life of light, we are living as our Father in heaven. Ephesians 5, 8 to 12 says, For you were sometimes darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of life. Verse 9 says, For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. 10 says, Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. 11, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Hallelujah. Verse 12, For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Did you see that? Apostle Paul said, It is even a shame to talk of the hidden things that are done in the dark. We can't mention them with them. We shouldn't even be talking about them. Much more do them. We are children of light, living the life of light. Number two, it's a way of saving the world. First Peter chapter 2, verse 12 to 16 says, Maintain good conduct among the non-Christians, so that though they now malign you as wrongdoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God when he appears. Verse 5, Be subject to every human institution for the Lord's sake, whether to a king as supreme, or to governors as those he commissions to punish wrongdoers and praise those who do good. Verse 7. For God wants you to silence the ignorance of foolish people by doing good. Verse 8. Live as free people, not using your freedom as pretext for evil, but as God's slaves. Did you see that? Some people will not hear us when we preach, but will watch how we live. If indeed our light shines brightest, they will see our good works and glorify God. And that is leading them on to God. Did you get that? Apostle Peter said a similar thing to wives in the next chapter. He said, if you have a husband who will not listen to the word of God, make sure you behave. Because your behavior, though they may not listen to the word of God, may watch your behavior and be convicted. Your life should do the preaching. Simple as that. And do it well. Number three reason why you should live a clean and a pure life. You are a soldier of the Lord, and that is how to be a good soldier. Second Timothy 2, 3 to 4 says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warred entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Hallelujah. One thing about soldiers is that they know they are not civilians, and they know that they are different from everyone else. If you are not a soldier, you are different from them. Besides, they hold to serious standards. What's not meddling in civilian affairs or living as civilians? This is the kind of mindset we need to have as Christians. See yourself as a man of people. See yourself as a man on assignment. And let that purpose drive you. Let that purpose become the controlling force of your life. And that should guide you the way you live so if you know that god has given me and sent me here with an assignment then whatever thing i do should be in line with that assignment then if we go on that path if we take that as our route for life we will be careful to live the way we live we cannot just live haphazardly and think that 
we are fulfilling the purpose of God. So see yourself as a soldier. And it says a good soldier will definitely endure hardness, go through things to maintain the standard. God bless you. I am Apostle Gideon. If you love the video, let me see your thumbs up. Also, you can leave a comment if you, you were blessed by this message. Let me know what you think. And I will see you in the next video. God bless you. Have a beautiful time. Bye.